On this episode of Between Two Beers, we talk to Peter O'Leary. Pete is New Zealand's most experienced male referee and officiated at 17 OFC tournaments, 69 A-League matches, and has attended 13 FIFA tournaments, which includes two World Cups and an Olympic Games. For the last six years, Pete has traded the whistle for a classroom and is now based in Hamilton as the deputy principal at Melville High School. In this episode, we get Pete to officiate on some unresolved Between Two Beers matters. We go in-depth on his experience at the 2014 World Cup, where he received death threats as the result of a mistake his team made. We talk about the time he was plucked out of the stand to officiate during a Premier League match, the time he pulled a condom out of his pocket in the middle of a game, and the health of refereeing in New Zealand. For show notes, links to listen and watch, visit betweentwobeers.com. If you like what we're doing and want to support the show for a cup of coffee a month, click the link to our Patreon page. Many thanks to those already on board. Hope you enjoy. Peter O'Leary, welcome to Between Two Beers. Hi, how are you? Very well. We are back in our Hamilton studio, Shay. We've got a table, a desk full of Boundary Road Pilsners. Uh, and we've got, now can I say, Pete, New Zealand's most qualified, experienced referee? Is that, can I say that? Uh, you can, but no, that's not me. Uh, that'll be Anna Marie Keeley. She's, I think, uh, reached the pinnacle for New Zealand football refereeing. Um, she is the pinnacle. She's done a World Cup semi-final, a female World Cup semi-final at that full World Cup. So New Zealand, for our male referees, aren't quite there yet, so. Okay, well, we'll give you the nod for the males, though, perhaps. <laughs> I think, uh, Shane, I, I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's fair. We've got a very, put it this way, we have got an incredibly experienced referee with an incredible career worth of stories we're going to dig into. But Shay, as we do, how do you know Pete O'Leary? Uh, through my time and Pete's time at the Oceania Football Confederation, I was there for five years, I think, 2005 to 2010. Um, I probably quite often emailed or called Pete either at short notice to give him his travel, um, his travel details or all sorts of things. Um, great guy. Um, we actually crossed paths at a couple of FIFA tournaments as well, yeah. um, notable one in Turkey. Uh, which was uh, memorable for, for both of us. Um, and I think Canada as well. Canada, yeah. Canada under 20s, yeah. we, we crossed paths. So yeah, we, uh, it was a cool travel companion and, and someone, uh, it's nice to see a Kiwi face when you're overseas. Um, I didn't have the football career that you did, Steve. You've probably been refereed by Peter a few times. Yeah, I was thinking about this today. A lot of people and a lot of my friends have very strong opinions on referees. They love them or they hate them or they remember. I'm not like that. I don't really remember refs at all through my career. I, I'm sure Pete refed me on a number of occasions. I can't remember them. I very rarely took notice of who was in charge. Is it because you never got yellow cards? I think so. I, was just, I didn't tackle and I didn't really touch anyone else, so I was a very clean player. Ref, 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 number nine. <laughs> I got the last touch, number nine. Just those ones. Pretty much. Um, but we were, I think, I was, I was trying to remember as well, I think the last time I saw Pete, what we talked was at the 2008 Olympic qualifiers where I was working as a media officer, Shay, you were head of competitions, and Pete, you were the big dog, ref in the games. Yeah, yeah. So I remember a couple of drinks, but I, I don't know you well, but I definitely know a lot about you. So I'm excited to have you, and I'm excited to have a referee because there are a number of points of contention that Shay and I have had on the podcast across our 42 episodes, some on air, some off air, and we were hoping we might get you to just just be an authoritative figure and make some decisions and we can just let this let, let the record stand on some of these so we're gonna put these to bed the first one nacho you're familiar with the 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 meal nachos yes yeah okay so sweet chili sauce with nachos no thank you okay it's tough to take. But that's, yeah. Referee's cool. Yeah, no. Just, you just got to deal with it. That's fair. Same as no pineapple on a pizza. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now we're... Okay. okay, we're straying into foreign territory there. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Excellent. So the second one... Um, Actually, can we just put context on that? Yeah, I'm a big sweet chilli sauce in the nachos guy. Shay thinks it's just horrific. Yeah. And we've been back and forth quite a bit on it. Um, what, what I will I say... Guess, is, I guess the decision has <laughs> been made. It's not, it's not just sweet Thai chilli sauce 
as a as a condiment together with sour. He actually mixes it in with the mince. No. Yeah. Hot sauce with the mince. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, Very good. Eating food in the bath. No problems. Whoa! Oh, there we go. One one. I'm not happy with that at all. I'm not happy yeah. with that at all. Yeah. Big eating in the bath guy. Happy you've said that, Pete. We're back. Okay. And the third one is actually a bit of a football theme. So let's just say that there was a Hamilton derby. I'm going to be very specific here. Um, two teams. Uh, one team in red, one team in blue. Yeah, well, okay, let, let's go that far. Uh, it's 1-0 to the team in blue. A wily, cunning striker comes on. Experienced. He, you know, he just knows the game well. And, and he rolls his man and he gets brought down for a penalty. So the, the red team gets a penalty. No, no issue with the penalty. No issue with the penalty. Stonewall penalty. Stonewall. Stonewall. We're not debating the penalty. As his teammate, as as the wily, grisly old striker's teammate, I can always picture up, him. Yeah, to slot the, the the goal, the ref blows his whistle for encroachment. Now, whether or not he encroached, we're not debating that either. Let's just say he did. He, he I don't know. know if he did, but let's just let's just say he did. Hypothetically, he knows but, he did. <laughs> what is the ruling? Should it be a retake? Or should the team in blue, the defending team, be awarded a free kick on the edge of the area, Pete? Okay, coming back to the encroachment, are we talking big and obvious encroachment? Uh, the, oh, hypothetically. Hypothetically, it wasn't big and obvious. No, it wasn't big and obvious. So, But we'll say for... But we'll say for the sake of, of the hypothetical that it was encroachment. Okay. So don't quote me, but I... Dredging my memory here, um, I think it says in the laws of the game if the player taking the penalty kick or a teammate infringes the laws of the game, if the ball enters the goal, then the kick must be retaken. Retake it, it's a retake. Sounds like a retake. Go. It's a retake. But if the ball doesn't enter the goal, then the referee needs to stop play, blow the whistle, and award an indirect free kick to the defending team. Okay. Well, I think hypothetically the ball entered the goal. Hypothetically, it was a goal. Hypothetically, for those who aren't familiar with Hamilton football dramas, you're probably a bit confused by that. But for those that know, they know. So we won the game. Yeah. Drew the game. <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically, we drew the game. Okay. So let's get started. Peter O'Leary has refereed at about 17 OFC tournaments, did 69 A-League matches, and attended 13 FIFA tournaments, including two World Cups and an Olympic Games. And as we do on Between Two Bears, we've sort of asked around a few of his contemporaries and, and friends for, for comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they, they actually had really nice things to say, believe it or not. Um, Mike Hester, who's a very well-known and respected referee, said, Pete's resilience and commitment to excellence were probably his hallmark strengths. He was at the top for a very long time and was very highly regarded in the A-League, particularly in the early years. Nick Waldron said, who's another top uh, Auckland and New Zealand referee, uh, said, top ref, great bloke, incredibly experienced, holds the record for refs worldwide for attending FIFA events and part of the New Zealand Football Roll of Honour with me and Matt Conger having refereed over 100 matches in New Zealand Premiership. But he loved a nude spa in Tahiti. So... Yeah, perhaps we'll, we'll get into that uh, down the line. But just, just reflecting... Oh, there's a doorbell. <laughs> Pete's got to go. Uh, just, just reflecting, Pete, uh, I mean, you've been out of the game now six years, and, and we'll get into that soon, but when you do think back about the record and what you've achieved and everything, you know, is there great pride there? Are you happy with what you achieved? I'm pretty happy with my career. Um, I wouldn't change it, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't change anything that's happened. It's happened for a reason. Um, I absolutely love football, and for me, I've always wanted to be involved at the highest level possible. Um, uh, my men's career, for want of a better word, was I started at Melville, just down the road. Um, and, well, I think we were, there was the Waikato Premier, and then there was the first division. I think we were the first division team, so what's that, third or fourth team? Um, my first year there was fantastic, loved it. Um, second year at Melbourne, um, different coach, um, different experience, we weren't that successful. And from there, um, you know, I thought oh, I'd love to be in the first team. I was never good enough to be in the first team. Just, you know, I could never, 
I couldn't hit a barn door from five yards. So what, what position were you? Um, I play centre back. Yeah. And we never got referees, so it was awesome. You'd chop people down. And, oh, sorry, mate, I'll pick you back up. And, <laughs> yeah, I was a crap player. Um, I was rubbish. Um, but uh, Johnny Anderson was at one of our games and we got chatting. And he was our supplier for um, one of my employers at the time. We got chatting um, at work and he said, Oh, if you're not enjoying it so much, why don't you come along and referee? I thought, Well, oh, yeah, okay, I'll have a go. Um, and then I used to play on Saturday morning, oh, sorry. Uh, referee the school boys on Saturday mornings, play Saturday afternoon for Melbourne, and then referee uh, women's on Sundays. And I got better and better at refereeing, and then thought, well, when did you when did you start refereeing school boys? I don't know when say it way back in ninety two, ninety three. Oh wow! <laughs> so yeah, could you have, could you ever have imagined the career when you first started? No. Uh, I didn't, I never went, my goal was to be a FIFA referee or be on New Zealand National League, nothing like that, not at all. Um, when did that become something that was on your mind or in um, your mind or how, how quickly was that kind of rise? Um, my rise within New Zealand football refereeing was, uh, I think, all pretty rapid. Um, I think it was about 95 I got into Northern League. And in 99, I got appointed to National League. I was then the club champs, I think, or NCC or something like that. Um, I remember Rex Dawkins, because we had a, a seminar at the Waikato University, and Rex Dawkins standing up going, um, these are the people, Tony Corp, Brian Precious, Derek Rugg, blah, 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 and Peter Adairi. Peter, I don't know who you are, but congratulations. Wow. So, yeah. And that was, um, and it wasn't sort of till 2000, 2001, I thought, oh, yeah, have a go, have a crack at being, being a FIFA referee. Is that, is that when you thought, oh, I'm actually quite good at this? Like, I had a bit of self-belief that you could have um, some of the biggest I, games in the world? I, I think the first game, no, not the first game, um, maybe my first big Chatham Cup game where I had um, Total Masu, um when they used to play at Fuddy Point Domain, and... Um, I think it might have been Waitakere United or Waitakere City. No, Waitakere City, I think it was. Because they had Carl Jorgensen was still playing for them and um, Ryan Dawkins was there. I and didn't see a lot of Jorgensen as a player. I've seen him as a coach, yeah. quite a, a fiery character. Uh, yeah. So I imagine he yeah, would have tested him. And they played at Tauranga and um, Tauranga beat them. And that's when um, it was there, Larry Seals as a coach for Tauranga and they had their old um, flannel cowboy outfit. <laughs> Just, you yeah. know. Um, and they beat them, um, and I could have sent Ron Dawkins off for the last whistle, so um, no, I won't. So, that, I'll just jump in there, because we also like to ask Ken Wallace for his thoughts on you, and his throwaway line was, ask Peter about the Ryan Dawkins yellow card. So you've, you've started the story, so um, yeah. here we go. Um, uh, when I first started at the National League, I didn't know any of the players, you know, but all the players were quickly, you know, Pete, you're the ref, da 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 da. And there was one, I think it was about 2001, maybe 2002, there was a season where I seemed to have Waitakere City every second or third game. And Ryan was just, yeah, as Ryan does, you know, you never give us protection, what are you doing? <laughs> at the time, I didn't know how to, I'd tried all the other skills that I'd used before with players, and I didn't know how else to do it, so I thought, Got a great idea. I'm just going to wait for him to say, yeah, you're not giving us protection. And there was one at a corner. The ball comes over the ball. Waitaki knocked it out for a corner, so they're defending. Um, and Ryan turns around, fucking give us fucking protection. I got to repeat. Wait, wait. Walked over, put in, pulled out of my pocket a condom, and went, here you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pre-planned gags. Yeah. He, he looked at it, biffed it into the goal. We carried on, and at the end of the game, he comes over and goes, you prick. <laughs> and from then on, no no issues with him. We'd just give each other grief during the game. But it was, yeah. See, this is, this is the thing that I was hoping that this podcast would give, is for a lot of people maybe listening, a lot of our football community listening, they know you, as, just as you said, Pete's the ref, Peter Leary's the ref, from opening whistle to final whistle, that's it. They don't know the character, who you are, they might think they do, but 
as Waldron alluded to, loves a nude spa in Tahiti. I mean, who doesn't love a nude spa? I know you're a big fan, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but these little kind of elements to your personality, this is hopefully what this episode's going to be about, teasing some more of these out. In that same theme, we had another one suggesting, and and I don't know if this story is, is true or not, but there's an incident with Tim Brown at the Phoenix game. Sort of a similar, was this a pre plan Do you want to talk no, us through? Um, you know, players, when they score goals here, yeah, it's all great and it's all happy. And um, one of the things we noticed with the Phoenix, you know, they, they seem to have trends like Ricky Herbert would always have a sub around 60 minutes. And you'd, you'd have a beer on it with the, with the other ARs on the game. Right, yeah, I reckon it'll be, you know, 59 minutes, 30 seconds, that's when it'll be. No, no, I reckon it'll be 60 minutes. No, no, I reckon it's... So you'd try and have a bit of a... You know, you, you know, trends in the game. And I remember with Sky, they'd, um, have, the, the, they'd have a close-up on the player scoring, then they'd cut away and have the replay, then they'd have a close-up on the player as they're walking back. And I remember, you know, there they go, and you're scoring, and off you go, and you record everything. And as you're walking back, and, Tim, Tim, come over here. He goes, yeah, yeah, what, what, what? What do you want? And I said, oh, I just want to be near. You're going to be on TV, mate. You can see your happy face with me. <laughs> so, yeah, just little sort of dumb things like that. Yeah. Um, slightly, a slight variation of of the message we'd got was that um, <laughs> that he'd missed. <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd smashed the ball over the bar. He did a shot, and he sort of said, "What the fuck are you smiling at?" And then you'd say, well, after that shitter of a shot miles over the bar, they're going to zoom in on you. And if I know if I stand next to you, mum will see me smiling. <laughs> that might have been another one. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing the PC one. Oh. Um, you've, you've name-dropped a couple of quite prominent New Zealand footballers. In your time riffing, there must have been some horrible trolls. Now, I won't get you to dig them all out, but <sighs> do you get sick of it? Um, week in, week out. A lot of it, I don't, I don't, I don't notice. I mean, for me, you switch on and you're at the game and you're just following play, and I'm just focused on that. Sometimes when the ball goes out, it's like, oh, oh yeah, something's having a chirp. No, oh, yeah, that's my fan club. Um, and then back into um, a lot of it, I don't hear. No, you're a bit like Stephen. You don't. I'm just. That's it. Um, but also use it to to help yourself during a game. You know, referees wanker, referees wanker. It's like, oh, what's awesome. it? Yeah, we're making an impact, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, just little things like that. Um, the trolling off the field and that, I um, I do have a Facebook profile, but I don't know what the hell it is. It's not controlled by me. I don't, you know, I don't follow that or anything. Um, I used to ha um, have mates see me stuff. I, you know. I think there was a photo, there was a, you know, the, in Turkey, there was a photo, we had the spray, and there was a photo in one of the internet magazines or something. Um, you know, it says, I nearly sprays the pitch with um, the phone. I think it was Nick Wardrum that said, yeah, it's not all you do with the bloody pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, I don't notice the trolls that much, and that didn't or hasn't really affected me. I know... Um, um, for the World Cup, for the Brazil World Cup, where it all went pear-shaped, um, the uh, my students at the school was at at the time told me at the end of the year when they were all leaving and stuff. Oh yeah, we went on Twitter, Mister, and we uh, said we were the president of that country, and we said they're all shit, and we said this and that and the other. I was like, oh. um, but yeah, for the, for the rest of it, I'm, I don't notice it too much. You we, don't you don't notice the uh, bad stuff. Um, sometimes. Do you notice the good stuff? Are you aware, for instance, that there is a website with an article that lists you as the fourth sexiest uh, <laughs> referee of the, was it 2014 14 World Cup? Yeah, Nick Waldron and plenty of others sent that to me. <laughs> what, uh, was, <laughs> yeah. what was the quote? Did, did we get the quote? Something about... Uh, I think like it's a strict disciplinary yeah. or a sexy accent or something. Strong arms, I think strong <laughs> biceps is what came in there. And then sexy accent. But there was a click through to your FIFA TV uh, Meet the Referees. And you'd adopted some very interesting accent yes. on that. It was, I, I, having 
traveled and been in those environments it's it's very fifa accent where you kind of accentuate the way you speak and dumb down sometimes the yeah, way you speak so. but we'll put a link in on a website <laughs> for, for, for everyone to um to have a listen to that but um, there's another link where i got interviewed um by ofc tv by frederick i think it was oh yeah and the boys gave me shit because I was trying to put on some French, French <laughs> accent, which is just horrible. You do quite good accents when you do it. Oh, I do a South African, I can't do a French. When you do a French real quick. No, no, no. I cannot do. It's, I don't know what that was. Um, okay, we, we're going to get into Brazil stuff because it's, it's, it's really interesting. But I want to start, one of the bits that grabbed my attention was a Premier League game in 2009. And I understand you were the guest of a high profile ref, I think Steve Bennett, Aston Villa against Sunderland. And you were there as a fan and ended up officiating the game. Yeah. Is, that, is that right? Yep. Um, long story short, we were in Zurich for a seminar. So um, FIFA sent us to Zurich for a seminar. And that was, oh, I can't remember when it was. I think it was 09. Before the Confederations Cup. So. Um, and I'd been invited by the FA to train with the Premier League for a couple of weeks um, and just experience that. Um, so we seminar had finished on the Friday in Zurich. We all went out and got shit faced. And about two o'clock in the morning, go back to the hotel. My alarm, I slept through my alarm and was panicking. Got up, oh shit, had this world short shower, shoved everything in my suitcase, ran downstairs got a shuttle from the hotel to the airport to find out oh thank god there's fog everywhere so the flight was delayed so that was really good so um flew into uh london city and then got in a car and was driven up to um aston villa, aston villa? yeah um and we arrived late and i spoke i had a ticket for the director's box but i said oh, well, i can't be bothered going up there let's just get in and watch the game um, and I had my glasses on, because I wear contacts normally, um, had my glasses on, had a bit of a suit on, or half high suit on. And then, um, yeah, half time came, so I got brilliant. Um, and then my name got called out over the channel, and I was like, <laughs> What have I done? <laughs> I was thinking, no, no, I, okay, I'll go to the director's box. So um, when I went to, um, made myself known to one of the um, stewards. I got taken downstairs into the changing rooms. I was thinking, oh, this is a bit excessive, you know, I'm, I'm only here to watch the game. Um, and then came downstairs and Steve Bennett, who I knew, um, says, Pete, good on you. You're up, mate. We've got, what size shoes are you? Yeah, there you go. You've got those and we've got a tracksuit for you. I said, what are you doing? He says, the AR's pulled a muscle. <laughs> You're fourth official, I'm going the line. It's like, oh, what <laughs> um, and then um, Martin O'Neill and uh, Roy King. Roy was um, Sunderland and Martin O'Neill was Hassan Villa, so it was, yeah. Did you have to go over and do the old no, no, no. calm down, calm down? Or no, no, like because that? I think the referee had already teed them up and said, oh, put your heads in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, got, you got this newbie in, in here. So I just sat, I basically sat there the, most of the game going, oh, you suck, find you ain't pulled up and check your boots and away you go. And I remember um, um, one of the Aston Villa guys, sitting there going were you here the first half <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you not see me uh, no oh, okay <laughs> well you for me just put me in at half time <laughs> yeah, yeah. so yeah it was pretty cool yeah um and then um what what was what was the what was the pace of the game like what was oh, it's similar to international it's a million miles an hour with skill um and and being players being squeezed up on the sideline with what seems not too much space and having that skill to just lay the ball off or dance and weave around yeah was re was being a premier league ref ever yep. an opportunity for you um i went to the uk way back in 95 96 i think um and i, I did a bit of an oe and um, did a bit of refereeing and while i was there i was um did uh, a bit of refereeing in London, not, bit, not at a high level. Um, I did one Sunday league game and said, no, I'm not doing this again. Because <laughs> that was just organised violence. Um, but I did, um, I refereed up in Lancashire and, and Cheshire mm -hmm. up around there. So I did a few games um, 
over that six months there. Um, and they said, yep, you've got some talent, but you've got, you know, you're new. So you're starting right at the very bottom to try and work your way out. So. When, when you look at the top referees, the best referees in the world, what do they have that you didn't have? Um, experience, experience day in and day out at that level. Um, for me, the the distance or the gap between A League and New Zealand National League was say um, five or six yards, I suppose, of pace. So you can almost the A League, you go right, you're going forward. I'll just nip in behind and just watch what's happening and you know you can see the dance happening type thing you can see what players are making their run so you know okay the ball could possibly go over there whereas New Zealand National League seems to be, seem to be you go forward oh we'll stop and then we'll turn and come back mm. um, the the pace the pace was yeah I think another five or six yards faster yeah um, I mean look at Benny Sigmund when he left Auckland City to go to the Phoenix it took him what, six months of off season mm. to try and get up to that level and then be subbed on to get more. Yeah, same um, with Roy Krishna, right? When he made the transition, it wasn't straight away, it wasn't immediate. But. And, and I think that's having that lead in time for fitness to get ready is really important. Okay, so just experience at that faster oh, pace very much so. and you're there, there very there's very nothing yet. yet. And it's, I mean, especially now in the game, you know, the last 10, 15 minutes is well that's where most of the goals seem to be getting scored now isn't it yeah between 79 to say 93 95. what was the biggest jump from a game that you ever had to referee like did you do albany metro on a saturday and then <laughs> columbia turkey the following week like no um um doing an a-league game say on a friday night and then coming back to New Zealand and doing a national league game on the Sunday. Right. Um, that that wasn't a regular thing, but that would be something that happened. Yeah. Um, for A League games, um, if they were on a say in Australia, I'd leave home at two AM on the yeah, so games on Friday night, I'd leave home at two AM. And home was Fungare at that Fungare, stage? Yeah. So I'd get picked up in the shuttle. Um, uh, the shuttle guy was an Arsenal fan, and so we got on quite well. Um, and I'd be. Are uh, you an Arsenal fan? I was. Yeah. Oh. Well, David O'Leary used to play, you know, centre back, so. No, I was a lot young, so that's why. Um, so I'd get to Auckland Airport, sort of quarter to five, five o'clock, um, check in, have the six or six thirty flight to Aussie, get there about eight thirty nine, straight to the hotel, sleep. Um, wake up at three, have something to eat, get changed, have a shower, have a shower, get changed, and then pick up for the game, get to the ground at six, kick off at 7.35, do your game, have a few drinks and something to eat after the game, sleep, and then try and get the first flight back to New Zealand. So these are long, it sounds like some, some pretty big sacrifices in long hours, and you had a young family at this point? Yeah, yeah. Um, Adam was born in 2007, um, just after Canada, oh, yeah. uh, after the under-20s, um, end of July, yep, and Ethan was born in 2009. So if you're a player, I mean players would play for nothing because they love the game, and to be a professional or whatever. <laughs> You know, it's kind of a dream come true. Is it the same with riffing? Like, are you doing that because you love riffing, or are you doing it because it's a good job and it's a good career path? Or do you have that same passion that players um, have to play? I'm referee to referee. I love football, and it's what I can do to give back. Um, if you're refereeing at FIFA level, you get some coin, um, but that was in recompense. You don't get paid by your employer at that time. So, like well, 2009, I had three months off. Uh, three months I wasn't teaching. So it had a huge impact on the kids that I was teaching um, and had a huge impact on I wasn't in the classroom, wasn't earning. So, so Rochelle must be pretty understanding. Yeah, very, 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 very incredibly supportive family, incredibly supportive employers. Yeah. So that was, um, what, Hillcrest High School? Till end of 2010, and then yeah, um, taught Jumma Boss for the Melville fans out there. Oh, yeah, 
Ja, en um, en in tänker på hur skolan fungerar. It's the sort of riffing would lend itself only to certain professions, right? Like not many employers would let you take three months off. Yeah. Teachers, uh, do you find a lot of the refs fall into certain professions? It seems to it seems to be um, teachers. A lot, a lot of teachers are referees. Um, but it's not like you can make up the hours either, because yeah. teaching you're fixed. So if you're not in term, it's not like oh, you'll pick up an extra couple of teaching shifts in the in the school holidays yes. so you've got a finite amount of leave and then you're taking over and above that yep. as well so yeah next time you call a referee a fucking prick think about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um okay let's let's take you to 2014 brazil and i was talking about this with shay like it's a really interesting story i don't know if you enjoy reflecting on it or talking about it but I mean, we'd love to hear as much as, as you're prepared to go into. Uh, the World Cup, I understand you'd been the fourth official for a game and then you were your first middle was Bosnia against Nigeria. Yep. Um, for me, fourth official for um, Honduras, France. Um, first time goal line technology is used. First time ever in the game goal line technology is used. Um, first time ever um, goal line, a goal scored uh, using goal line technology. Um, really interesting situation. Ball hits the crossbar, and then comes ricochets back out, and then and, um, gets to the goalkeeper and saves it on the line or just over the line um, because it's so quick. On the TV screen in the stadium, it says no goal because that was the the ball hitting the crossbar and then coming out. It says no goal, but by that time, everyone's, the goalkeeper's got the ball just over the line, and everyone's going, what the hell? And, uh, um, we've all got watches. I was going to say, you had watches, right? We all, we all had the watches. Is your watch goal, goal, goal. Oh, it shows goal, 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 and it vibrates. Um, and we're all mic'd up, as per normal for, well, since 2009, I think we'd been mic'd up from since then. And so the... Um, Sandro was the referee, and Brazilian uh, officiating team with myself as fourth official. How's your Portuguese? Mm, not very good. Obrigado. <laughs> 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 goal! It's a fucking goal! It's a fucking goal! So we were all going blah, 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 and I was just on the horn going goal, goal, goal. Um, so Sandro calmed everyone down, came over, and I did, as I said to him, my watch says goal. And he, has he got the same watch yeah, that says? So we've all got the same. Right. It says, thank you. My watch says goal too. So off we go. Um, and then there's, um, there was a nice shot that was shown that had um, Deschamps and whoever the um, Honduras coaches uh, are in between them trying to placate them. Um, which was pretty much basically. And your French, your French, French and Spanish. One was saying French, and the other was saying Spanish. So I'm going. Yeah, it's all right, mate. It's all right. It's all good. No problem. <laughs> um, With your FIFA accent on. <laughs> 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 no, no. It uh, says it's a goal. Goal. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So we were appointed to a second round game. Um, Nigeria and in Bosnia. Um, group, still group stage though. Group, group, group yeah. stage, second round. But um, it was full of excitement. It was, um, there was uh, a lot riding on the game um, because there was also um, Argentina and Iran in that group. Um, so Argentina was expected to progress um, and basically that Nigeria Bosnia game was to see who was going to come second. Um, and it was in, I think, Curitiba, which is in the middle of the jungle somewhere. We flew in eight hours. Um, it was, what, 35, 35 degrees. It was hot. Um, lovely antique stadium. The drums were all going. It was fantastic. Um, yeah. Um, things were going quite well um, until whichever minute of the game it was. 21. 21st minute, <laughs> 20, according to my notes. <laughs> 21st minute of the game, um, the ball was played through. Um, the Eden Jeko for Bosnia um, ran onto the ball um, and scored a goal, but the AR uh, put his flag up. Um, and I said, sure, yes, sure. So we blew the whistle for offside. Um, as the referee, I lead the team. So. 
if the team makes an incorrect decision, then it's my responsibility. Um, so, yeah, um, with the AR technology today, mm. we would have been, because we let it continue, and the goal would have been scored, the goal is still. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. Um, so, yeah. How soon after the game were you made aware that a mistake um, had been made? We didn't know anything, it, there was anything wrong until after the game when um, we sat down um, in the changing room with our uh, referee observer. So for every game you have a referee observer and he came down and said, cool, everything was really good except for this. It's like, oh, okay. How overwhelming is that, realising the extent of the error made and thinking of the repercussions? Are you aware that the storm is about to come and um, hit you? Well, we know if FIFA expect you to, to be perfect and to improve. Um, so we know if we do not, if we have a subpar performance, we'll never get another game. All we'll do is train. And when the first cut is made, which is at the end of the group stage, we know we're on a plane going home. Um, if we look at South Africa, um, I was fourth official for, for that World Cup and I remember sitting on the bus going home with Jorge Darianda from, from Uruguay, um, Roberto Rossetti from Italy who's now in charge of the European referees. Um, who else was there? Um, oh, the Swiss referee. Um, uh, he's now head of referees. Yeah. Gian... No, 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 Mm. That, that's the uh, like but we we know that going in you know that going yeah, in yeah. you know you muck up that's it you're going home so so you're in this meeting with the, the ARs so, and you get this you see that you, the mistakes made are you kind of do you look at each other and are you like fuck um, um, in the debrief straight after the game in the changing room we just all we were told was verbally you've made a mistake okay thanks um don't know how big the mistake well obviously you know the mistake's quite large um then we went back to the uh, hotel um once we get back to the hotel we then get our phones and our devices because those all get taken off your morning of the game um and that's also security around stopping any you know, shame warm uh, weather reports or anything like that <laughs> um so we got back to the hotel you get your device you get your phone um you turn it on. You turn it on. Um, and there's a few texts come through from a few people. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. Just random numbers or people oh, you know? No, or... People I know, yeah. Right. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so I, I just chuck the phone in the bed and I already said to the guys, we go up, we get changed, we have a shower, get changed, come back down in civvies, and we'll see you in half an hour downstairs. So we got changed, came downstairs, and then we had a debrief ourselves. Justin, around the corner of the restaurant, so not everyone could see it. Well, we were staying in a restaurant that had fans there, um, as well as a FIFA delegation. So we just went down around the corner and had something to eat and just talked about it. Just, you know, you know I, I'd al always said previously, if, oh, if something like that happens, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but when it happens, it's like, oh, it's happened. You got yeah. We're not curing cancer. We can't change the decision. The decision's already happened. We've just got to look at what are we going to deal with and next. I imagine quite a test of your leadership though, because that's something which it, you didn't make the mistake. You had to own the mistake. You weren't able to even offer your excuse. I can't imagine you were even able to tell people it wasn't your call. Or, or no. No, because you're the leader of the team. You have to take responsibility. So it's like, yep, yeah, okay. Let's go. And it was from there that we said, right, we've got to show that we're uh, not above, but um, we can go through this. And as a team, we're going to watch each other's back. Or we're going to make sure when it comes to training, every training exercise, we're going to smash it 100%. We're going to show everyone we're still willing and, and fronting up. Um, 
when we got back to um, Rio, um, we still went out for our walks every morning. Um, we just wake up at seven o'clock, out half an hour walk, um, you know, and the, with the public, um, and then walk back and have breakfast and then do what we normally did. And for some of us in the team, it was it was hard to you know decisions happened, but it's hard to front up day in day out. So I think we had another ten days, maybe twelve days mm. after that, to keep doing. You know, all we're doing is training. All we're doing is training. All we're doing is training. But meanwhile, the sort of storm of trolls are, are growing and gathering, right? And you had some pretty nasty sort of death threats and things got to that level. Yeah, um, I didn't know about that. That, ha that happened here in New Zealand. <coughs> um, I got a lot of emails that I just didn't even bother replying to. Um, um, I would already set up before leaving with with Fano saying, hey, if something happens, unplug the phone, make sure you've got a plan where you're going, so you, you're not at home. So if something happens, it's not there. Um, I'd also shared that plan with school. Jeez, that's terrifying to even have to be thinking of your uh, family as a result of something that's happened during your job, right? Yeah, but it's, I'd, I'd rather be prepared and planned. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's a really important point that a lot of people probably don't appreciate is the level that you're no disrespect intended, a teacher from Tikipunga High School is going to the biggest showcase in the world. Those are the things that you actually have to, you have to put those in place because it's the biggest dance and there's a lot riding on it and there's some crazy motherfuckers out there who would die for their country. Oh yeah. Definitely. And kill for their country. Um, I mean, I look at it in New Zealand rugby with Wayne Barnes. Yeah. You know, mm. it's a similar situation. Like we, it's still, that vitriol is still there with some rugby public. Yeah, so is yours, by the way. Yeah. I, ju <laughs> I, ju I, ju I jumped on YouTube to, in preparation for this and had a look, and they're still like, it's like well, three, three months ago, people well, are still saying, well, just think about it, it's the first time Bosnia as a country had been at the World Cup, and it was their chance to go through to the, to the knockout stage. Mm. It, it, um, we had David Higgins on, the boxing promoter, who had a similar experience um, during the... Uh, Huey Fury fight where he went after the promoters publicly and he was getting the same thing and he you know talked about how isolated he felt afterwards and how challenged that was you've kind of indicated that you weren't really aware of it but I was aware of it but I kept a distance yeah and tried to keep a remove from us where we were because we couldn't control any of that we couldn't control what New Zealand media were doing um, and trying to manage that with New Zealand football um, as much as possible because we were representing New Zealand, New Zealand football um, while we were in Brazil um, and also with with my employer at Tegapon High School. Yeah, yeah interesting. There, there was also the, the other incident was the, um, the photo, right? Yes, um, uh, normally, normal end of the game, um, yeah, you shake hands. Well done um, for that incident. For me, um, I didn't have any investment in any any of that. Um, it's, I've seen the photos that look like I'm uh, enjoying having a laugh with the with the goalkeeper. I was, um, um, but it was also interesting to be able to offer advice to um, the referee of the next game who referee the final uh, Nicola uh, was only to say hey watch out for the goalkeeper because he will come up and, <laughs> and, and, and if I said to me yeah he did and he was just mm. wow yeah. and just being able to seeing that and being able to prevent it so because that, that caused another that, huge that, big that caused what was an honest mistake to look like maybe there's something else yeah. some collusion it fueled the conspiracy yeah. theory didn't it there's a big petition and all sorts now, now is it right that you're in the fallout from that that your devices then got taken by fifa and no, our, um, your devices get taken right prior to the game um right the morning of the game everything you got hand everything over um and then you don't get those back to after that and that's to prevent as you've seen, you know, the shame warm weather report or the pitch pitch report. So the, to knock that on the head. Fuck. 
Do you must have come away from that experience as a referee with a, a certain sense that nothing's really going to trouble you anymore. You've as a, as a human, like <laughs> th- this is the worst mistake that could potentially be made on the biggest stage. Like fucking nothing's going to compare to this. Um, in hindsight, yes. At the time, it's like oh jeez, you know, doom and gloom. Because well, it is, and you, you know, my World Cup's done. Oh, I'm finished. I'm only here making up numbers till the first cut, and then I'm on the home, plane home. Did, did any part of you want to just go home early? Um, yes, but that's also escaping from the problem. So yeah, so we just we were just solid as a team. We said, right, this is us. Come on, let's go. And, and what's the mood of? Because there's uh, I might have my numbers wrong. I think there was twenty five trios or twenty five yeah. teams there. So you're one of twenty five. What are the other twenty? Are the other twenty four getting around you and supporting you? Are they um, yeah, distancing themselves from every, you? Everyone knows, yeah, you know, what's happened. Yeah. Um, so what? What typically? Typically, what happens is um, you train every morning. So you train for three hours. Fuck it, that's a long session. Uh, not not in table time, but right. in, in in training time, you have three hours. Right. But you'll be there at the venue training, warming up, warming down specific drills, etc. Depending on what um, what rotation you are in, so it might be match day. Excuse me, match day minus three, match day minus two, or minus one, right. and then there's recovery day plus one or plus two. Um, everyone knows when you've made a mistake and. Everyone reacts differently, so yeah. Is is there an unwritten referee code that you don't publicly criticise another referee's decision? Um, is it like a kind of like a no? I don't think so. union I, I thing. Think, I think we're um, pretty straight up and honest. And yeah. when we have our deep so in the afternoon, yeah. typically you'll either be watching games or there'll be a debrief, and the debrief is. Here are some of the things that did, we did well, and these are the things that are crap. And what would you do to change? And then it's everyone has a, everyone has a chance to go. This is what you did wrong, and this is what you should do. Oof. So, which is you know it's almost death by PowerPoint. Well, no, it's not death by PowerPoint. It's death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, because you know you've mucked up. Yeah, and you know. But it's not only those big decisions that you've mucked up, it's also looking at the small nuances. You know, how can you improve this? Where, what can you read and play? You know, just those little things. What was your relationship like with FIFA after that? Did you do more tournaments? Was that? Um, that was my last tournament. And I, I knew, well, my age was against me. Um, yeah, because there's an age ceiling, right? There was, you know, there isn't any more. What, oh, was, okay. what was the ceiling? 45. Right. Still um, chance for you, Steve. Yeah. <coughs> but but um, I knew once you've done, once you've made a mistake on that, that has that bigger ramification. You won't get used again. Um, for me, um, I I can accept that. I've got no issues with that. Um, I was invited to do Japan Uruguay. After that, um, unfortunately, I my salas so I was injured for that and couldn't do that um, but I, I was involved in the Asian um, Cup so the Confederation Cup um, when was that? 16? Gen- January 2015 15, yeah. so yeah. Have, have there been moments when you've been riffing at these incredible tournaments or, or games when you've just been like fuck these guys are good players like yeah. holy shit oh, what, yeah. what did I just see like, yeah. that's amazing um, it's when it's almost like a ballet, you know, where you can see moves within moves, and so you just there, just watching, going, "There's going to be a goal here. I can see it. And he's going to go from here to here to here, and then he's going to run and then bang." And it's you just sitting there going, "Yep, it happens." You go, "Yes, I can see what's happening. I can see how they're making those plays." And that's that's the fantastic stuff. Yeah. But sometimes then you've got um, um, come back to New Zealand National League and you've got Jake Butler going <laughs> and you're going, Jake, just keep the ball in your feet, stop cooking your way. Cheers, Jake. Good guy, come on. Uh, or, or, or because we're all mic'd up for sound, someone will kick the ball and it's almost like kick and chase. <laughs> and my ARs would say, would hear, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, then, and then you run. <laughs> Sorry, apologies for the language. But, yeah, just, just jumping back on Steve's point, like, uh, who was the best T20 
team or player that you were involved in at that top top level um, that you saw live in person um, either on the pitch or from the fourth um, Kaká was special he would faff around and do nothing for 89 and a half minutes and then that 30 seconds of brilliance that was like wow that's fantastic mm. um, being able to see AC Milan in Barcelona um, um, being fourth official on Portugal playing Brazil was that Ronaldinho's Barcelona? yeah yeah. he, he was playing did you ref a game with Ronaldinho? I didn't ref a game with him I was in the crowd watching him that one I think yes I was in the crowd watching yeah. Brazil Portugal uh, Brazil Portugal was fourth official um, that Fuck was um, that was fantastic being, being able to watch those players you know it's yeah because uh, uh, Waldron's comment are you are you the referee who's been to the most FIFA events? A male referee yeah. who's been to the most? <laughs> I was. I don't believe so anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a pretty cool title to have held. Yeah, well, it shows um, one confidence that FIFA has. Um, I was the first official, I was the first Oceania official to be back refereeing FIFA games after the 2004 no, 2000, yeah, 2004 Olympic Games, when the penalty was retaken. Yeah, I, I, you'll have times. yeah, you'll have no idea about this. Pete, talk us through what happened there. Well, maybe uh, you do. So maybe I'm doing you a disservice, Steve. Sorry. I guess we'll There's um, uh, music, uh, sorry, uh, Oceania officials, uh, referee in ARs, went to Greece for the 2004 Olympics, and they had a game where there was a penalty that was retaken about eight times <laughs> encroachment encroachment got be moved and it was just a farce it was farcical, right. it was farcical yeah it was a farce and oceania were not invited back to right anything till um till 2007. what's going on in that referee's head by like the third retake is he is he just totally I reckon he's just head loss yeah he's just head loss and then he's looking for like any little thing yeah. and it's like because there's times there's times when you know something's happened and you say do not do anything because this is what the public expect this is what football wants that might not be you know kosher within the law but you know this is the outcome that everyone will accept because if you go to the letter of the law everyone's going to go what are you doing do yeah. not have a feeling or an understanding because that, that's a really uh well thrown out criticism is like oh ref doesn't know he's never played he's got no feeling for the game is that one justified and two is that something in your training that you that you get trained um, sometimes yes sometimes yes it is justified and other times it's not um for more and more with New Zealand football, with Oceania, with FIFA, you train live with players. So there'll be scenarios, free kick set pieces, or you know, different scenarios involving players. They they say make a decision, make a decision. So everything was at FIFA, everything was recorded. So um, ARs have offside training for an hour every every training session that's just offside and part of that might be with the referee and players you know, moving um, laterally across the field or vertically up and down and, and it's all designed to are you right, are you right, are you right so they can make make a decision um, move off the pitch have a look at the TV are they right, yes or no and then th that all gets analysed and put on the, on the mix as well Pete, Pete, just going back to that uh, hypothetical um, this is going to blow your mind but it wasn't actually hypothetical it actually happened really happened. Game, uh, last year but one of the things that happened in the fallout was the, the ref got a lot of stick um, he didn't own up to it but someone on his behalf sort of spoke up and said he got it wrong in that situation behind the scenes is there a network of support for the ref like, I think he stood himself down for a few games but do, do the guys rally around him like what happens in that um, scenario look we're a small pool um, of, of officials and um, we do rally around to make sure people are okay um, usually driving back home after the game you'll ring someone and say hey this is what's happened I think I've mucked up or, or this is what's happened um, and advice and support is offered um, through senior colleagues around that um, this year New Zealand Football are putting out the um, ref wellbeing package 
um, through RefLive, and that's a fantastic advancement. Um, that was something that wasn't around when I was active. Um, to support referees, also to, it enables the federations to look at data around potential clubs that, hey, this, I don't feel happy about refereeing this club because I've been abused before or things like that. Um, first and foremost is to look after the health and well-being of, of match officials and second is to look at, hey, if this is something that's an ongoing thing with a particular club or a particular team, then it's something that needs to be addressed. Pete, in the time since you became an international referee in 2003 through to when you retired in 2015, what was the biggest change that you observed? Um, for me, the professionalism. The, um, just going for a run around the park or a run around the streets to warm up for your game, which is what I'd always done. Um, do some stretches, you're ready for your game. From that to you've got organised trainings, um, with, as an example, um, of Sunday's game day, Monday's active recovery for 30 minutes, Tuesday's a uh, high intensity session, or a speed, no, high intensity session from anywhere between 28 to 45 minutes. Um, Wednesday's rest, uh, Thursday was speed endurance, Thursday, uh, Friday was rest, Saturday was um, a sprint session, and then you'd have um, game on Sunday. You'd have um, gym sessions within those, um, at, uh, looking at your different active recoveries. Everything was done on heart rate, so everything's, you know, from going for a run around the street, yeah, I'm ready, to everything's on heart rate. You record your game on heart rate, you look at um, how you're operating within a game. Um, uh, looking at, say, things like the um, Premier League, um, they use Prozone, um, and the, when I was there, what, 2009, I think it was, um, they would um, estimate, uh, use Prozone to calculate distance from fouls. You might see, this might be a secret, I'm not sure, but you might see in some of the, um, in some of the stats, uh, English referees are only 16 metres from a foul compared to French referees that are 18 and Italian right. referees are 20 metres from a foul. But if you look at English Premier League, there's a foul, the referee runs in and blows a whistle. So, and you record everything when the whistle's blown. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can tweak those things. Yeah. Um, other cool. things, um, um, practicing and with live players, you know, practicing with players, looking at video clips regularly, looking at trends in the game. Um, there's the mental side, um, looking at those mental exercises. Um, you know, um, little triggers and cues that you have. Like for me, I have, when I was active, I had three breaths before I blew the whistle. First breath, you know, all the stress out down to your shoulders, second breath out down to your hips, third breath out through your feet, and you're ready to go. Just little things like that. Um, yeah, for me, the whole professionalism, um, I think Ken Wallace at New Zealand Football has done a fantastic job. So, and I've got to say, I think a lot of credit is due to Ken and what he's instituted, um, and it worked for me. It doesn't work for everyone, but it worked for me, and that's, yeah. One of the other things, and I've been lucky that I've been to World Cups with teams, in the lead up to the games, quite often a referee or a referee's representative will come in and brief the teams on the laws of the game and run through some of those scenarios with the players, which I think are really good. Does it work the other way around? Do players, active players, ever come in and give the players perspective with referees yeah. on um, interpretation of... We've had um, Gerald Houllier come in um, and give briefings. Um, we've had um, maybe not the named... Act, um, you know, the big names name are, etc. We've, we've had other players come in and say, hey, this is this is where we're at. Um, I also think as a referee, it's good to do some training with, with players. Um, sometimes, you know, when I was in Hamilton, Wanderers was the, was the local club, so I'd just get down because it was 500 metres from home when I lived in Thievy Downs. So it was, you know, it was only yeah, 500 metres down a pirate and I'd go down and, and do a couple of their trainings just to, when they're playing skills based and, and sometimes have some of the local referees just to be down and say hey this is you know this is where you should be in position when this happens this is where to be in position when that happens um, just to try and pass that knowledge on in a practical sense um, 
but yeah, it's it's important that you do be approachable with players. I think um, sometimes some players said to me, "Hey, Peter, we can't talk to you." And fair enough, and maybe in, in that at that point in the game or at that point in the day, no, I wasn't approachable. But I've got no problems sitting down with you. Yeah. Is there ever a case where you can be too close to a referee? Like one of the things from a Waikato perspective, Auckland teams come down and they're like, ah, oh, fucking Waikato referees. It happened on the weekend. Oh, we forgot how parochial you are and blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Excuse me. Can you be too close to a referee? Do you need yeah. to maintain that yeah. distance? I think sometimes you can. Right. I, mean, I remember National League, everyone goes, or well, everyone was, oh, Pete, how are you? And it's like, I don't know who you are. Or some player would turn around, you know, I don't know. Just using players' names as an example, they might, Jake Butler might have a go at me, or Ivan Vizilic might have a go at me. And because we've already got that relationship, we both know we can call each other yeah. some things, yeah. and we're this close, you know, two or three yards away, and we can say whatever we like. And some player that I don't know decides, oh, I want to have a bit of this. Yeah, like, yeah right. Hey, hey, hey. So you almost have to earn that right, earn that respect S- through. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, relationship. And, and I felt. The, when I was doing National League, and, and the, which was summer based, and trying to create time with family, which is incredibly difficult at times when you're trying to do football, um, to then come down and do a couple of Winter League games, and it did sometimes feel like one, one person say, hey, you're a little bit precious, you need to do our games, and it's like, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, but not to do the Northern Premier or Northern First Division, but to come in and do the Second Division games because no one knows who you are. I don't, I don't care who, you know, you're Peter O'Leary, oh, good one. <laughs> I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and that's where it was like, oh, this is great, I'm back in, mm. I mean, I remember when I moved to to Wellington and I was FIFA referee, yeah. And the, and the first game, um, uh, it was at Lower Hutt. Love how playing someone, I can't remember who. And I remember um, one of the players saying to me, um, coming onto the field at halftime, uh, are you new here? I went, yeah, yeah, I'm new in Wellington. Oh, have you played before? Yeah, yeah, I've played before. Oh, I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, that's cool, you know? It's, because yeah. it's, you're refereeing on your mirror, it's not, yeah. not refereeing on, oh, yeah. it's Peter and Eri. Yeah. We've got to make sure we don't side tackle, but you can, you know, smash someone with the elbow type of thing, yeah. It, that is really interesting because if you've been around the game for a while, you do start to, yeah. you build that. And, and people know, oh, it's O'Leary, okay, well, don't do this and this and this, but you know he's a bit more robust with, and he'll let these things go. Yeah, yeah it's Waldron. You know there's going to be red cards. Yeah. Out of <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Pete, what's the health of refereeing in New Zealand, and especially around the domestic game? Is it hard to attract... Uh, new young referees? It, it, you know, I think like most sports now, it's getting harder and harder um, to attract people. But I think the young referees that we've got coming through, I'm pretty excited about because they're starting off with a great base. Um, yeah, but there's, they've got fitness plans, they train regularly together, there's, um, the coaching's a lot better. Um, I remember when I first started, you turn up at the, um, the old Air Force Club off Cobham Drive and one of the gardens there and there's Brian Gilmore and John Cameron and Sitsa de Boer and uh, Peter Halls and Derek Larry and a few others and you hi, how are you? Yeah, you're good and you know, have a have a bit of a laugh and coaching was oh what happened in your game of the weekend? Oh yeah. Well oh, you shouldn't have done that, you should have done that. <laughs> yeah, and well you know John Cameron. Yeah. Uh, he's he's a law to himself sometimes, so it's but it was, I think now, um, having a, a really good coaching and mentoring plan um, with New Zealand referees, we've got, um, we've got an elite group of referees that, uh, that have that potential, that um, have that potential to referee at the highest level, um, you know, a uh, uh, World Cup. There was a um, quite an issue with abuse towards refs. I, I guess it's always been there, but they tried to remedy it. Was it three or four years ago? They introduced the sin bin rule for for abuse. Is, is that rule still in play? I think so. And do you think it was a good idea? Did... It, it solves it very quickly to remove the player from the field. Um, you're always trying to. 
do what's best for football, I think, not just what's best for the referee. So for me, it's what's best for football. Um, I suppose that also brings in VAR. Um, yeah, some of the abuse that people give on, on a Saturday, it's frustration from life, frustration from job, frustration from family. And I'm going to let it out. And yeah, I'm going to hammer this poor guy. Sometimes <laughs> it seems to be that's okay. Um, but I always remember one of my games, someone gave me abuse. I swing I saw this. I was over at Matter Matter, my first year referee. But I don't need this. Give us the ball. I'm going home. Oh, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, okay. Sir, sir, so, sir, don't, yeah. don't, 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 I'll have a talk. <laughs> and the guy going over, fuck it. And I was like, after the game, I have a chat to the guy that was giving me abuse. He oh, sorry. I didn't realise I was getting that bad. It, it is an interesting one. Like, friends of mine that aren't football players that play rugby or whatever that do come and watch a game, I just hmm. go away thinking, how can you speak to an official like that? Yeah, and it is an, it's a unique thing to our game, which is quite a negative. It, it is a negative part. cultural trait that we think we can just say whatever we want to this guy, and they'll either a they either have to take it or yeah, or if they don't take it, it's like oh he's overreacted here. It's like it's part of the game. It's a weird, it's a really weird one. And then and to follow on from that, do you think players would make good referees once they've finished playing? Um. Sometimes. I remember Darren Fellows um, refereeing a um, Waikato referees playing Auckland referees and you know, referees just wanting to kick crap out of each other. I'd heard that was the dirtiest game and, going, and, the, the and, referees game. And he said, oh, fuck this, I'm not doing this again. You guys can stick it out your bums and you give us grief. You know? <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you do, you try and kick each other to death. Because I think... How, like, if you finished retiring at, I mean, if finished retiring, if you retired from... Slow down, Shane. No, no, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Refereeing actually is a really yes, exciting thing. It really gets you going. It does. <laughs> let's take Stephen, for example. Mm, I'm not retiring you, but let's say you did retire this year at 36. Six. Happy birthday for last week. Thank you. Um, it's unlikely he would get to a FIFA World Cup. Oh no, there's no age limit now. There's no age limit now. But how hard is it for someone who's played the game their whole life to then turn around, pick up the whistle and do a good job at it? You will need to be nominated for FIFA before 40. No, oh, you're cooked. What about National League? Yep. Why not? That's the email now coming in. Could do National League. Ken Wallace <laughs> saying you're in. <laughs> Um, one of the frustrations I hear from players is that referees don't own up to their mistakes after games. They stonewall, even if they've made an error, they, they won't sort of come clean on it or explain with the players. Is that something that happens a lot or is that unfair? Um, I don't know. I honestly don't know. If I make a mark up, I'll tell players and admit that I'm wrong. Yeah. You know, maybe not in the in the game, but at the end of the game, someone said, "Can we have a chat?" Mm. I've always been open to coaches or players coming here and having a chat. Yeah, I've always said to them, "You go and do your media or national league. You go and do your media thing. I'm going to go for a warm down. If you want to have a chat, come and have a chat." Mm. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. And if they want to have a gripe, it's we've come for a chat, not a gripe. You know, if you ask me a question, I'll explain. Oh, we had a um, Herald idea two years ago now, I think. We said, let's do Day in the Life of a Northern League referee. So I got Bruce to do it, and we picked a game specifically that we thought might have a few fireworks, and it was North Shore against Manukau at, at North Shore. So Bruce goes along, and he's talked to the refs before. I'm it was sure Waldron. Waldron. And he's organised that in half time, he'll be in the changing rooms, and he'll get comment from at the end and photos, and he's going to be there for the whole journey. So... Saturday afternoon, go. I get a call at about five o'clock, and it's Bruce, and he's like, "The game's been abandoned. Seven players got sent off. It's madness. I'm going to have an amazing story for you." <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, Jesus! <laughs> what are the chances that we've followed the story? Like, amazing!" So we had video, we had photos, yeah, the full write up, the rest reports, everything. Um, but yeah, I don't think many games have been abandoned for seven or more seven players sent off but are there any games that stick out for you across your journey as exceptional um my first international yep um was uh, my first full international was uh, nation's cup uh, final 
2003, I think, um, in Solomons, and it was Solomons playing Aussie, um, and I've been rung out five days before, oh Peter, you've been appointed, you're flying, off you go. Bob Patterson was the, um, was the match coordinator, and I remember um, Johnny Tinzululu, who was big in, in OFC then, he was, he did not cross Johnny. Um, I remember 2005 I think that was or four yeah something yeah. like that yeah and I remember um, um, we had the, the um, security briefing beforehand so that it still had the police force the Ramsey force there because of all the the yeah. headings and the put the head on the, on the stake in the market and so there were police for Africa everywhere so we had that security meeting um, and then we had the match um, uh, match preparation meeting and I remember you know we sat in the same seats it's just the, the the meeting title changed I remember John Lee saying you're the referee now yeah. what no no I'm fourth mate I, I know I'm fourth because everyone's told me that and I've really got my bears lined up for the same <laughs> afternoon so I'm, I'm all good he says no 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 you're the fourth you're sorry you're referee and and then Bob opens the meeting and says, right, da da da, da and the, um, the referee is um, um, the guy from Fiji, I forgot his name, and Johnny says, no, 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 this guy, this guy's the referee. I said, no, no. And Bob, quick as a flash, yep, it's that, that, thank you, Johnny. Uh, Leone, was it Leone Rakurai? That's it. And, <laughs> I love my referees, <laughs> eh? And um, he says, oh, Peter, you're the referee. Um, and for me, that was my first game, um, you know, 37 degrees. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, big crowd. Big crowd. Twenty thousand people were there from about ten o'clock. Um, and I remember, you know, you, you walk out of the hotel and walking along the footpath, and I was shit. Someone's got a cup and says his blood on it. It's like it wasn't that. It was a bit on it, you know. Yeah. So you get the whole yeah. National Geographic. It was fantastic. Yeah. Um, um, ten minutes in the game. Vince Lear, first yellow card. Um, um, crowd wouldn't have liked that 10 minutes in either no no was, yeah 10 minutes in first yellow card um, um, Aussie score the first goal um, then Solomon's come back and it was one all um, and then it's bits of glass and rock and stuff get chucked on the on the pitch I remember Schwartz are coming over big piece of glass what the fuck are you going to do about that <laughs> so can you find the cunt that threw it fucking you can hit him <laughs> and he chucks it away and off he goes um, because it, it's, you know, you're, it's good to have that banter. For, for me, I enjoy that banter, you know, it's, whatever you say, you can say whatever you like to me, you know. Um, and then at the end of the game, um, um, going inside, I was absolutely wasted, I was shattered. Um, go inside, get changed, put on the training shirt, come running, go for a warm down. And one of the, um, um, there was a rabbit reaction squad that was there. That we were told if anything happens you run for them because they're running for you and they're all there with their getting off their um riot squad stuff one of the guys says what are you doing he said running out to find my ass out of the um but you know game that that was i love that game that was it was no time to think no time to prepare bang you've got the game it's yours you know in 24 hours you're refereeing and off you go um so that was fantastic, my first um, first ever FIFA game, um, well first A International, um, first uh, tournament in in um, in Canada. Mm. That was under twenties Canada. That was fantastic. Um, being invited to Toulon in France to be involved in that uh, international tournament for that. And just being invited all over the place to, to referee. I mean, a lot of them I couldn't I couldn't accept because you know. Yeah, how many did you have to turn down? Um, lots. Yeah, um, Middle East, South Africa, um, Africa, a few. Yeah, but <clears throat> there are places. You know, uh, they said oh, I come and referee in Egypt, and I was like, oh no, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. No. Refs who are still in the game probably wouldn't answer this, but you've been removed now for six years, so we'll give it a go. Who, who were, and I'm thinking domestically in New Zealand national leagues and club games, who were the dirtiest players? Who were the, the real troublemakers? 
Benny Sigmund is definitely one. He was supposed to be on the podcast last week. We'll get him on he, to rebut, to rebut. Do, do you remember him playing, who was it? Was it Malaysia or Singapore? I mean, it was yes. The, the and stomp. Yeah, the stomp. Saudi Arabia yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, that was, oh, come on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Benny, Benny was good for a, for a laugh as well. You know, he could have a, have a real go at him and he'd have a real go at me. So, um, duty players. No, I really would have to think a lot harder than yeah. We'll come, we can come do, back to that. Do a player's uh, pedigree or experience or your relationships sometimes subconsciously affect the way you treat them with decisions? Yep. I'm thinking specifically of Aaron Scott, who is, I think, widely regarded as the nicest man in football. He's done his, you know, he's done his years. He's still playing now, and I see him get away with things. I'm like, I, I think because of what he's done and the nice guy, maybe some of the refs are a bit more lenient. Maybe, maybe. Um, I mean, Andrew Durante, still, he and I still, he'd say, excuse the language, Peter, I think you're a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't do anything about that because I only thought it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having, being able to say things like that to each other, um, you know, and, and at times when you know, jury, you got away with that, didn't you? He goes, yep. So it's, and, and okay, yeah, right, yeah, well, next time we'll make sure we get you for it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What about refs then? When you think of the best refs, you set aside, who, who's New Zealand's best ref of all time? Um, that has to be uh, Anna Marie Keely, um, semi final for World Cup. You know, major World Cup, not men's or women's. She's fantastic. You can't, you can't be that. Mm. Um, the uh, referees that I looked up to when I was rising the ranks. Um, who was there? Brian Precious. He was he was class. I thought. Um, uh, Kira Bright. Yeah. I know he was not seen by everyone, but I polarizing. I, I learnt a lot from him, and I remember as he was, um, I suppose, coming down the ladder as I was going up, and I remember watching him in a game saying, you were two or three yards off the pace, mate. You should have been, you know, a couple of yards at the head. And he goes, yeah, no, but no one will notice. Don't worry, it's just you and me. <laughs> um, did those two ever um, prank you or oh, yeah. or anything like that on any yeah, LFC you know that, tours? You know that, don't you? <laughs> I don't know. Did, they, did, did they ever do that? What? Uh, it sounds like there's a story here. <laughs> um, my first uh, OFC tournament I went to, um, Cook Islands, 2001. So, uh, I was, so it was word for word oh, what I've got yeah, written here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we were playing, there was a cycling coming, so we were, um, we were on shutdown. And that was back in the day when, um, obviously we'd give you an allowance to, to get your meal. Um, they don't, well, the last time I was there, they didn't, they'd provide the meal for you. Um, so like, true tight asses everywhere we went right if you eat breakfast and dinner you miss our lunch you're gonna make a bit of coin so we got quite a few beers and decided oh, let's have some beers um and because the cyclone was there it'd be two days of no games so um there were bloody chickens that were running around that would wake up every bloody morning. You know this, don't you? <laughs> so they'd wake up every morning. I said to the boys, oh, don't worry, I'll get this. And went out one morning and caught one of them and gave it a yank and chucked it away and off it went. Um, and that didn't happen. And a couple of days later, we were playing cards in the afternoon and having a few beers. And they'd bugger off every couple of minutes, well, not every couple of minutes, but you know, every half an hour, they'd, oh, I've got to go. And because I was in my room, I said, what are you guys doing? You know, come here. Oh. And it was my turn to go to the toilet and open the door and there's this bloody chicken in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, a few things like that were really enjoyable. Was there another night where you went out in your full riffing kit for a night out? To the oh house? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that was, <laughs> you got that one down as well. Oh, Jesus, there's no secrets for you guys. Um, that was American Samoa. Well, it was a double, it was a double down there. You've done, it, you've done it a couple of times. According, according to the notes, it was in Bar Fiji. Oh yeah, we, we did that in American Samoa. 
Um, <laughs> went out full kit, all of us, uh, yeah. and had a good time. Um, How overused was the Gaboo red card? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 the fuck the feet you would, but no, <laughs> the rest. Um, yeah, I think we did it in the bar as well. Yeah, well, what is the, guess the bar Hilton and... Yeah, that's, and, it, that's all there is. And, um, bar, so. and how much truth to your entire refereeing trio getting so badly sunburnt in Tahiti that you nearly weren't able to officiate the game? No, no, I was, I was not that sunburnt. Oh, you were okay? I was okay. The other two? That, that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were sunburnt. That was, um, that was the one that we... We weren't even in the country 24 hours. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you, what's that, you? Yeah, it would have been me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now that was, yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Did you sleep with the lights on that night? Yeah, well, you, you know, the geckos are everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> so one of the, one of our correspondents who wishes to remain anonymous says, um, this is all from Waldron, eh? Look, I'm not, we're not we here can't, to name we names. Can't names we not, can't name sources. We're not here to name names. It says, rooming with Pete for the first time in 2007 and finding out to my dismay that he sleeps with the lights on. And oh, as no. the senior He's in the room, <laughs> he called the shots. Worst two weeks of my life. <laughs> you sleep with the lights on, Pete? Um, I read to go to bed. Oh, sorry, I read to go to sleep. And um, for that particular tour, I think he said he, I was reading and I fall asleep pretty easily and every time he looked over I had the book open and it looked like I was awake <laughs> but what you should ask Hester is um, in that trip was it New Caledonia is that the New Caledonia one ask him why he kept turning the TV on to the channel one I know exactly why. we know we know exactly <laughs> at, at midnight yeah we know exactly why he yeah. did that because Stephen and I both did that as well let's let's just double down on Mike Hester for a second here because um, for the duration of your career, you two were the best referees going around in New Zealand. Um, was it competitive between you two? Because you were both, I guess, vying for FIFA World Cup um, appointments. Yes, yes, it was. Um, but not negative competitive. It was... Um, Respectfully competitive is how it's been described to me by yep. another correspondent. Yep. Um, we would compete against each other, but whoever won, you know, it's not a competition, but... You need that. You need that competition. I, th I believe you need that competition to to be the best you can be. Um, and at that time in New Zealand, we were it was both of us that were competing. So for me, in other countries, that's normal. You know, it's because the refereeing pool is so much larger. Um, so at that time in New Zealand, uh, he and I, um, and then after he left. For want of a better word, I suppose I was top dog, and there was there was competition, but maybe not at the same same level as Mike. And is it are you guys still friends now? Is it a yeah yeah yeah? Can you get him convince him to come on the podcast because he reckons his employers won't let him come on? Uh, well, he's working for New Zealand Rugby now, so yeah, yeah. sanitised. Only one ref per fifty guests, so anyway. <laughs> yeah, true. true. We've, nearly, we've, we've nearly done our quota. Um, we're, we're drawing to kind of the close, but before I guess we, we we shut the chapter. What are you doing? Are you still involved in football now? What are you? Um, yep, I'm um, uh, observing um, local referees in, in our uh, Northern League and within Waikato. Um, I've been mentoring and coaching the National League uh, referees and observing some of the games um, through television mostly um, because I was located in, in Taranaki which is four hours drive from from everywhere. Um, so you've, uh, you've relocated back to Hamilton? Yep, yep, back in Hamilton. And working locally at a high school? Locally at Melbourne High School, yep, awesome place. So. And close to signing a partnership agreement with Melbourne Football Club? Apparently, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. Um, but when you when you turn up to club, what's the reception like six years down the line after hanging up the whistle? Is it is it? Are you well received in club rooms? Do you make yourself scarce? Um, I, I've never been a showboat. I'm, um, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a salesman, I suppose. Um, so I just do what I have to do, and then, and then I leave, type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have you into Gower Park for a beer at least once this season. Yeah. 
Because I mean, you you you're a, a, a former player, and I think your photo, rightly so, yeah, is, from, from the show the other day when I was when I was in, yeah, yeah, is up as one of the New Zealand representatives. Because let's face it, you you, you are a New Zealand representative on the world stage, someone who's achieved a hell of a lot. Um, so I think that should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to wrap things up. Um, Pete, thanks so much for, for coming in and and sharing such detail. I know some of those, uh, the 2014 in Brazil, I mean, I enjoyed hearing it. I was captivated by listening to it. I don't know if it's a, a tough thing to talk about or reflect on, but uh, it was it was great listening. So thanks. thanks for coming in and dropping by the pod. Shane, last words? No, good to reconnect. Hopefully we see you down at Gale Park a little bit more. You can come and have a beer, um, yep. get you involved in the committee, and we'll sign, that, uh, <laughs> we'll sign that partnership with the high school and get things really rocking. Sounds good. Cheers. Okay, thanks. Too easy.